Good morning, everyone. The Mass Intentions for today, uh, for Pope Francis, all bishops and priests, for Carmel, for the Redemptorists, our families, friends, and benefactors, for baby Matthew Dalmazio, and for Teresa Cotzia, and all those recommended to our prayers, especially the sick and the dying, for the repose of the soul of Lillian Perez, whose anniversary occurs, and the souls in purgatory, for the conversion of sinners and for the reign of God's kingdom on earth. And today we have the um, memorial of St. Teresa Margaret Reddy of the Sacred Heart. God is love, and whoever lives in love lives in God, and God lives in them. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. And in your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us prepare for Holy Mass by asking for peace and pardon in our lives. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. <clears throat> Father, you enabled St. Teresa Margaret Reddy to draw untold resources of humility and charity from the fountainhead, our Savior. Through her prayers, may we never be separated from the love of Christ. Grant this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. First reading, a reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brethren, let no one deceive himself. If anyone <coughs> among you thinks he is wise in this age, let him become a fool, that he may become wise. For the wisdom of this world is folly with God. For it is written, He catches the wise in their craftiness. And again, the Lord knows that the thoughts of the wise are futile. So, let no one boast of men, for all things are yours, whether Paul or Apollos or Cephas, or the world or life or death, <coughs> or the present or the future. All are yours, and you are Christ, and Christ is God's. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord's is the earth and its fullness. The Lord's is the earth and its fullness. The Lord's is the earth and its fullness, the world and all who dwell in it. It is he who set it on the seas, on the rivers he made it firm. The Lord's is the earth and its fullness. Who shall climb the mountain of the Lord? Who shall stand in his holy place? 
the clean of hands and pure of heart, whose soul is not set on vain things. The Lord's is the earth and its fullness. Blessings from the Lord shall he receive, and right reward from the God who saves him. Such are the people who seek him, who seek the face of the God of Jacob. The Lord yes. Alleluia. Alleluia. Follow me, says the Lord, and I will make you fishers of men. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. While the people pressed upon Jesus to hear the word of God, he was standing by the lake of Gennesaret, and he saw two boats by the lake, but the fishermen had gone out of them and were washing their nets. Getting into one of the boats, which was Simon's, he asked him to put out a little from the land, and he sat down and taught the people from the boat. And when he had ceased speaking, he said to Simon, Put out into the deep, and let down your nets for a catch. And Simon answered, Master, we toiled all night and took nothing. But at your word, I will let down the nets. And when they had done this, they enclosed a great shoal of fish. And as their nets were breaking, they beckoned to their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both the boats so that they began to sink. But when Peter, Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. For he was astonished, and all that were with him at the catch which they had taken. And so also were James and John, the sons of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon. And Jesus said to Simon, Do not be afraid. Henceforth, you will be catching people. And when they had brought their boats to land, they left everything and followed him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus. <coughs> <coughs> the last couple of days we've been hearing about Jesus at Capernaum, the seaside resort and place where he made his headquarters and where he uh, went to Simon Peter's house. And the emphasis was on the power and the authority of Jesus, the Word. And today the focus moves uh, to this incident uh, when Jesus was preaching and he met Peter and saw the two boats where he was preaching and got into the boats as we have heard and when he was finished this preaching uh, he started talking to Peter himself who was very discouraged and disgruntled after a fruitless night of fishing. And so the focus for the rest of the proclamation of the good news this morning is Peter himself and a kind of profile uh, of Peter emerges. Peter, first of all, comes across as a fairly straightforward, 
uh, honest, decent person who tells the truth when uh, Jesus told him to cast his nets. Uh, and he says, well, it's a waste of time. We've been fishing all night and got nothing. There's no fish around here at all. Yet, if you say so, I will do so. And so there's an echo here of the dialogue between Gabriel and Mary. Gabriel making a proposal to Mary that was totally beyond her imagination and comprehension. And so she says so and asks, how can this be? But finally says, yes, let it be done to me as you say. So Peter is honest also in the same way as Mary. Also Peter acknowledges his sinfulness. I am a sinful man, really. I don't want to deceive you. I don't want you to think I am some kind of good person, some kind of holy person. I'm a sinner. And that humility of Peter uh, draws Jesus to him even more. Peter was overcome, fascinated, awestruck, uh, and yet he was able to acknowledge his own limitations. So he had a sense of being saved. And as Luke tells us later, in his second volume, Peter says, we are all saved by the gift of Jesus. And so there is this conversion going on from Peter being perhaps careless or indifferent at times to the things of God, uh, meeting Jesus, recognizing who something about Jesus, not fully just yet, and recognizing something about himself, perhaps not complete either. Yet there is this change in him, and the change is the conclusion, really, of the gospel today, that he leaves all and follows Jesus. And therefore, Peter has the beginnings of a deep faith. Not that he won't be shaken in the future or make mistakes or even deny Jesus, but there is already in him so much of grace and goodness that will, in the end, triumph in his life. So this faces us with many questions about our own honesty before Jesus. I am a sinner. And yet, we are all open to grace. We are open to the mystery of God. Not simply miracles like this extraordinary catch of fish, but to grace in every area of our lives. And we are called to continual conversion. And so this little glimpse of the spiritual state of Peter and his willingness to acquiesce in Jesus' requests and indeed to leave, leave the whole business of fishing and follow Jesus sustained by the promise that somehow he will become a fisher of people, whatever that means. Peter obviously wouldn't have been too clear what is he talking about, but he always is straightforward and honest. And may we find that an encouragement in our own journey. Amen.
Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth, and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God. Lord God, we ask you. So let us pray that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the grace and glory of his name. For our good and the of all such Lord, receive these gifts in memory of St. Teresa Margaret Reddy, by this perfect sacrifice, make us grow in unselfish love for you and for our brethren, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For in the saints who consecrated themselves to Christ for the sake of the kingdom of heaven, it is right to celebrate the wonders of your providence by which you call human nature back to its original holiness and bring it to experience on this earth the gifts you promise in the new world to come. And so with angels and saints, we praise you as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy. <clears throat> Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving you thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, 
Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you, and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Your death, O Lord, and profess resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, Stephen, our Bishop, Sylvester, his auxiliary, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Jesus gave us these words so that we may pray well as we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. <coughs> as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that 
by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. <coughs> Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity, in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. The body of Christ. 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 Amen. 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 The body of Christ.
Your life is hidden now with Christ in God. <clears throat> when Christ, your life, appears, then you too will appear with him in glory. Let us pray. Lord, may our reception of the body and blood of your Son keep us from harmful things. Help us, by the example of St. Teresa Margaret Reddy, to grow in your love on earth, that we may rejoice forever in heaven. We ask this in the name of Jesus, the Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Mass is ended. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. St. Michael, the Archangel, Amen. defend us in the day of battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. <clears throat> Do thou, O Prince of the heavenly hosts, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who wander through the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. <clears throat>